Hello, welcome to the latest edition of DBE TV News. Thank you for watching us every Friday on the DBE TV channel 122 on Open View at 12 p.m. and on Bricks TV channel 509 at 430 if you are a StarSet subscriber. Remember, you can also watch this bulletin on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. I am Tsehohajo Moachi. In the top stories this week, Basic Education Minister engages stakeholders in Vereniging on the Early Childhood Development Function Shift. The Basic Education Department is pleased with the progress made in the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. The department reminds schools that corporal punishment is not allowed. Director General Matanzi Mamweli hands over shoes donated by various implementing agents in KwaZulu Natal. We hear more about the deaths of three siblings in Gauteng. Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mhaule urges learners in Mpumalanga to focus on their books in order to have a bright future. Let's start here. Basic Education Minister Angie Motecha embarked on an early childhood development stakeholder engagement roadshow in Vereniging. From the 1st of April, the early childhood development function officially migrated to the Department of Basic Education from the Department of Social Development. This was as part of a directive by President Cyril Ramaphosa during his 2019 State of the Nation address. The DBE continues to engage with the ECD practitioners and other stakeholders since the ECD function shift. Motecha has reminded stakeholders of the importance of this shift. I've been visiting different parts of the country, the things we need to encourage everywhere else, and we're continuing the workshops to really hear out from our ECD programs what our expectations are, but also share with them what our views are. Because this is a new terrain for all of us. The way social development, when we freestyle again, when we freestyle again, and then you get your stipends. You come to an education department, it's a very structured environment. And you have to work through with yourselves how you find each other. And that's the purpose of this evolution. But more important is that we really need to talk, 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 talk ourselves and yourselves so that the end product. Both of us, we, 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 we travel to the path together. I never said if you can hear how one of us are, you know, to have my cerebral, we reduce the work and we do the same energy. So it must be an agenda that we travel together. We tell you what else government we expect from you, and we also want to hear also from yourselves what your expectations are, and really negotiate our way around you. The Basic Education Department says the placement of young people in schools as either education or general assistance to the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative has assisted them to learn and grow. The PYEI has assisted the sector by providing capacity to schools to manage the impact of COVID-19 on schooling, supported teachers and learning in classrooms. It has also supported the basic education sector as it repositions, reimagines and reboots the future beyond COVID-19. Provinces have been hosting workshops to review the implementation of the PYEI during the first two phases and investigate how the initiative is progressing now. And we know that this initiative is really targeting the vulnerable of the most vulnerable. Uh, we are seeing young people, if you change them, if you change the mindset of one, if you change how they communicate, if you change how they behave, if you change how they think, um, you are ensuring that um, you are helping them to be employable because we know young people um, are not coming empty-handed. They come to the project with some kind of knowledge and for us is to add on what they have, change the mindset, 
change the attitude, provide training so that when you add all these together, that the young person will have trainings which adds to the skills and they will also have positive attitude and positive outlook to life. Then it means these young people, when they present themselves to their future employers, they will be able to convince the employers that they are employable. Maje has emphasized the importance of partners in order to ensure that young people can branch off into other avenues of work if that is what they want to do. We want meaningful experience uh, for all assistants and we are saying we cannot do this alone. We need to partner. So partners that are locally in your community, we need them to assist us in terms of providing pathways for the young people. You can't wait for the province to provide partnerships. We are requesting that we work with our local partners so that we are able to create those pathways uh, for the young people. The department has partnered with various stakeholders to ensure the young people get the necessary training they require. One such partner is the National Electronic and Media Institute of South Africa. So the PYEI, we run through a basic training. So the first part is an introduction on how to use the platform and an introduction to digital literacy. We then take them through Microsoft Office, just an introduction to Microsoft Office so they can understand what it is and how it works. Then we do a section on the internet, how to use the internet. We take the students through how to set up an email address. And then the, th the next section is a little bit about how teachers and educators can make use of digital technology in the classroom. And then the last section of the course week five would be an introduction to emerging technologies. Uh, we give them a little look at data analytics using Power BI and uh, an introduction to IoT and to AI. The Northern Cape Education Department has also held a two-day presidential youth employment workshop. Let's hear now from some of the assistants about the work they do and what they have learned from being part of the program. As a child and youth care worker, I am actually doing a lot of work um, by studying, by doing gatekeeping at school, checking whether the children are coming to school on time, are uh, they in a proper uniform, and after then, then I start doing the observation in the classroom, checking whether is there any absenteeism of the children, how do they behave when they get inside the class, and while the teacher is so busy teaching, how do they behave inside the classes. Um, being a child and youth care worker, it gives me more knowledge that I also do home visit, whereby I realize there are children that uh, do, do not respect their elders and others do not respect the teachers in the, in, the, in the school. So that makes me to do some home visits so that I can see the environment of the children, where they came from, and is the environment neat and tidy? Is, there, is it the environment where the children can be grown in? I think mostly with the availability of the resources, it has prompted me up to ensure that I speedily also, due to the excess of the resources, get to build and upgrade my skill sets. Um, as far as your digital um, um, skills are concerned, software skills are concerned. Um, so my communication skills as well, um, I've gradually um, upgraded in that area. Um, I was usually not a person that can be much more com confident in talking to people or in a large amount of audience but now I can say that I can see uh, much of a improvement um, in terms of interpersonal relationships with co-workers um, or colleagues, um, professionalisms, um, social etiquette, it has, it has really um, been part of the um, things that I can say I've really, really um, built up my skill set. The Department of Basic Education has condemned the use of corporal punishment at schools. Principals, educators, learners, parents and or any other staff are required to report the use of corporal punishment. Schools have been reminded that corporal punishment has been banned 
and may not be used as a method of enforcing discipline in schools. Since 1996, the Republic of South Africa, empowered by the constitutional ruling, banned the usage of corporal punishment in all schools. Over the years, the Ministry of Basic Education has taken various steps to address incidences of corporal punishment by developing the protocols to deal with incidents of corporal punishment in schools, as well as introducing positive discipline measures to address ill discipline in all schools. The 2019 General Household Survey revealed that corporal punishment incidents had declined from 16% in 2019 in 2009 to 6% in 2019. The Ministry of Basic Education will continue to work with its stakeholders, including school management teams, learners, parents, school governing bodies, teachers and civil society organizations to ensure that corporal punishment is eradicated in all schools in South Africa. After the break, we are in KwaZulu Natal as the Director General Matanzi Mamweli hands over shoes to schools in that area. The Presidential Youth Employment Initiative, or BYEI in basic education, aims to create opportunities of employment in our schools and to provide support to workers. The education assistants support teachers with administrative tasks, classroom management, sports coaching and cultural activities, while the general school assistants help with maintenance, cleaning, vegetable gardens and general administration. During the first phase in 2019-2020, the Western Cape employed over 19,000 teacher and general assistants to ensure continued teaching and learning in a safe environment. In 2021 and 2022, during the second phase, over 20,000 teacher and general assistants are employed. In addition to the valuable work experience gained at the school, the assistants receive training in various fields. The education sector welcomes this initiative. It allows our teachers to focus on their main duty of teaching, while assistants engage in supportive roles. Basic Education Director General Matanzi Mamweli visited Amakemfundo and Undumeni primary schools in the north of KwaZulu Natal to hand over shoes to the learners. The shoes were donated by CEOs and managers of implementing agents doing work for the department's school infrastructure projects. This follows the devastating floods in April and May, which ravaged the province, causing havoc for many homes, families, and schools. Mweli was joined by the KZN Education HOD in Gosnati Ngobo and other stakeholders within the basic education sector. Our reporter Nandika Bjorkas has more. Basic Education Director General Matanzi Mamweli, together with the Head of Department in the KwaZulu-Natal Education Department, handed over shoes to learners. The donations to two schools in the Glencoe area were made by managers from implementing agents such as the NECT, Mvula Trust, Kuha DBSA and the Director General himself. Mweli says although the learners may have been affected by the floods, no child should go to school without wearing shoes. When the goodwill of South Africans and friends abroad um, was outpouring following the flood disasters in KZN. We said we cannot fold our arms and just watch. We also have to be counted because we are extremely fortunate and we have to reach out to the less fortunate. This is just the beginning of a very small token of appreciation as the winter is approaching we don't want any child to be coming to school like we used to do. Walking barefoot, following cattle, waiting for the dung to drop from the cattle so that you can mess your feet in there to get the heat which is still uh, fresh from the dung. 
of the cattle. We don't want that to happen to these young ones. Although the second bout of floods did not affect schools, they did, however, affect the access to schools, which is a major concern for the department. We, we are recovering from a very devastating event. And, and as soon as we were trying to recover, it hit us again. Uh, you know, two weeks ago, it, it hit us again. But uh, uh, fortunately, the second time around, it wasn't... Uh, you know, um, it, it didn't affect our schools that much, but it did affect uh, access uh, because the roads, this time, this time it hit um, most roads which had not been hit, uh, which had not been hit before. Head of Department in Kosanati Ngobo says the provincial department is grateful to the implementing agents as well as the basic education department for the donations, which are sure to leave a lasting mark for the learners. I have to really thank you. Thank you and the implementing agents um, as our partners um, for the gesture. Um, you, you, you touch me, uh, DG, when you're talking about putting your feet uh, uh, on cow dung because uh, I know that life very well. Uh, I know that life very well. Growing, growing up, and uh, I remember that, that when, when it was dipping day, yelang a let deep lengom where you would uh am seeing gomu kala at the P. And then we had uh, we had an exemption from being punished for late coming on days when when we had go for dipping our our, our my yeah my grandfather's cake. Um and um, yeah we, we in, indeed it's it's a true story. Uh, and, and for that gesture of ensuring that uh, at least it's I am Nandika Bukas reporting for DBE TV News in Glencoe, KZN. Now to some sad news. The community of Rotunda and the Gauteng Education Department has been left shocked and reeling after the death of three siblings. 16-year-old Nitlokhonolo Gaupane, Katleho Gaupane who was 13 and Debocho Ngongwane who was 6 all died on Thursday 26 May. They were learners at Rotunda Primary School and Kanya Nesedi Secondary School respectively. It's alleged the children drank an energy drink given to them by their father on that Thursday morning. It's understood he gave the drink to all five of his children, but only four of them consumed it. Two of the boys died shortly at the school after complaining of stomach pains, while another was rushed to the nearest hospital, but died on the way. The fourth sibling is in a critical condition in hospital. Gauteng Education MEC Banyaza Sufi visited the two schools to offer comfort to the learners and teachers. He has ensured the school staff that the psychosocial team will be assisting learners. I came here to comfort the staff and our learners. I came here to share my grief with everyone affected and also on behalf of the Houting government extend our sincere condolences <coughs> to the school, family, relatives and the community at large. Ours is not to judge but to give support. I want to thank the leadership of the school, the principal, for the report they've given us. Because it is this report that you are gathering that you want to take it to the family so that we can explain to them the last moment of their children. They were in our care. It's our responsibility that we go and provide this report. The family says it is shocked following the deaths and says it seems that this is something the father had planned for a while. The spokesperson has also detailed how the father has apologized and has said he does not know what he was doing. <laughs>
le ba supporta lona ka ofela botle ka ofela ke ka re modima ka thusa o supporteng ya lona lotlhe le re tsietse o fitla ka pelo tsenya mo tsebetse eh ha re tsebe diabolosi o fomo ya o ditsela o lakena mo go re ke wa mphuta o fe ho re ntato wa bana a ba nke tsetwa re a khoneletsa se a sentse eh unkile ke energy drink o re kile energy drink a mix ali se wa ana se rekile mo ka re ke hal show na le prime o de re so a mix a mo o seng o ka re ona ka tide ma bona ba atso o ban to yenze after o ma ma bona atso a em sebetsing so after me a bona ke ta utswa ke hanka and energy drink ena na a tsena bana a ba nisa by four Lisufi then went on to visit the family to give them support. What we are doing is to make the family to be aware that they are not alone. The brief chat that we had with the family, indeed they need help, they need our assistance, they need our support, and we would not get that if we have not been here, so that we can get this information directly from the family. So. We are here to give support to the family, nothing else. We are here to allow the family to go through this pain with us, so that they don't go through this pain alone. And whatever the family directs to us, we will execute the way they want it to be. The family says they are at pains to understand what happened and why the father would do this to his family and then try to take his own life. I overdose. I overdose. I overdose. I overdose. I overdose. I I Meanwhile, the Northwest and Limpopo Education Departments are shocked and saddened by the deaths of a teacher and learner, respectively. In Limpopo, the Departments of Social Development and Education have condemned an incident of fighting which resulted in a 15-year-old grade 10 learner committing suicide. It is reported that Puloshom Tembi allegedly had an altercation with another learner after school and she then decided to take her own life. Teams of social workers were dispatched to the area and started with the provision of psychosocial support to the learners at the school, the affected families, as well as the other affected parties. In the Northwest, Education MEC Mapefo Matsimela has condemned an incident where a 45-year-old female educator was shot dead outside Rudanang Primary School. It's alleged the incident took place just before 7 a.m. during the arrival of educators and learners. An onlooker called the paramedics and police, but the teacher was declared dead on the scene. The department has sent a team of counsellors to assist both the learners and the educators affected by the incident. As DBE TV News, we send our heartfelt condolences to the families and friends of the deceased. Stay tuned. When we return, we hear from Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mhaule as she motivates learners in Mpumalanga. Everyone has their own definition of what education is and means. What is yours? TED is a show that seeks to challenge the status quo by inviting guests that have a role and an inspiring story to tell about their journey in education. A lot of it is not learner-centered. This show seeks to dive in deeper conversations in quest of answering the big question, why education, when there's so much to do outside of it? Why invest energy and resources that are so impactful in our society? You're seeing a, a cartoon character that looks like you yes. counting to 10. Yes. This show airs on DBE TV channel 122. In case you miss it, binge watch it on YouTube, DBE TV. And also don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, simply DBE TV.
Education Deputy Minister Dr. Regina Mahaule has urged learners at Amadlelo Aluhlaza High School in Pitre Difen in Bumalanga to ensure they listen to and respect their teachers. She was speaking during the Early Childhood Development, Read to Lead and Second Chance Matric Support Program Roadshow in the province. She was joined by the Provincial Education MEC, Bonagele Majuba, and other stakeholders in the sector. Mahaule encouraged learners to change the situation at home and not dwell on where they come from, but focus on their futures. Change will start with you. Say it, change will start with me. Change will start with me. Change will start with me. Who's owing you? No one. For you to open your books and study. No one is owing you. Nasekaya. Ziche no guti. Guzo kalangam. Uma gunge eko owego a paso metriki kale kaya. Iti guzo kalangam. Yes, I mean no kalu pano metrike ka. I mean no kalu gye vesite kaya. And now, was we invested in my passi? As a pass, who's an hour who seven we visit who has a statement? Sapo, who passi? What have I ever passed? A passila banyo no passi. They bought a leg as a pass, as passi. How they went on to speak about the importance of having positive friends, especially. In a schooling environment, have positive friends, friends who see a bigger picture, friends who will tell you that, my friend, we will win, we will make it, and we are going to the university, we are going to be engineers, we are going to be doctors, we are going to be teachers, we are going to be nurses, we are going to be officials of government, work in our municipality, and change the situation. Don't keep friends who are always criticizing everything. And you should go to my the robots and I'm going to go to my own. I'm going to criticize your jalogy. I'm criticize your own end. So please, Madam. It's for you to go to Nyaka. Lo, Maupela, beginning of next year. Watch in one. School of Messi is door. Zichig is it. The local chief in the area spoke about the importance of children attending an early childhood development center from as early as possible in order to ensure they have a strong learning foundation. That's how we end this bulletin this week on Channel 122 on Open View, on YouTube and on Bricks TV Channel 509 Starset. Before we go, let's work together to stop the violence in schools. Let's make schools gun-free zones and a happy and pleasant space for all to be in, learners and teachers. Thank you for watching.